With victory in Europe and the Pacific secured, the Allied powers were left with a conundrum. What to do with the remnants of the defeated Axis navies? The Italians got off somewhat lucky here in switching sides midway through the conflict. They would keep a decent portion of their surviving fleet. The Germans and Japanese would, however, see their fleets divvied up by the Allies. Some of those ships, and a couple Italian ones too, ended up with the Soviet Union. The Red Navy, at the time, was severely lacking in modern surface warships outside of the Kirov-class cruisers and some destroyers. The grand construction plans Stalin put in motion, from battlecruisers to battleships, were rusting on these stocks, or destroyed during the German invasion. Although how effective those ships would have been is perhaps a topic for a future video. Regardless, the Soviets were looking hungrily at any source of modern warships, or even capable warships, considering how long they held on to Royal Sovereign and Milwaukee. As a result, the Soviets got a good deal of use out of these prizes, mostly on secondary duties, admittedly, but even that's valuable service. In this video, I'll go over these war prizes, as much as I can, anyway, because past a certain point, Soviet record-keeping becomes... questionable. Quite a few of these ships vanish into history, with a footnote of when they were scrapped or sunk as targets. That said, let's begin with an example where we can say for sure what the ultimate fate was. The sole Axis battleship operated by the Soviet Navy. That ship, the Italian Giulio Cesare, did not have a happy post-war life. Allocated to the Soviets, without Italian knowledge at first, the ship was only handed over in 1949 after an attempt at sabotage by extremist youth groups in 1948. Under the provisional name of Z-11, the ship sailed for Albania, where she was formally handed over. Now named Novorossiysk, the ship instantly became the largest and theoretically most powerful ship in the Black Sea Fleet. Theoretically, because the ex Cesare was outdated and obsolescent, even when Italy first entered the war. In 1949, the ship was thoroughly obsolete and would have suffered in any armed conflict. Quite ignoring, of course, that the battleship was handed over in deplorable condition. The Italians were, as I said, not exactly happy about this situation. So they performed the absolute bare minimum to make Cesare and the other prize ships ready to sail. To the point that the battleship still had her wartime camouflage, faded and spotty, on the superstructure, as well as only one gyro compass, busted diesel generators, and other auxiliary equipment that ranged from bad to outright broken, not even mentioning the rust peeking out from the haphazard paint job. As could be expected, the early years in Soviet service didn't exactly go well. The ship was a maintenance nightmare, constantly breaking down and requiring a lot of work to keep running. In fact, between 1949 and 1955, the ship required no less than eight refits, all the while operating as a training ship for the hopeful addition of new battleships down the line. Until, in 1953, the machinery broke down so completely that the Soviets threw up their hands and went, tear it all out and replace it, which they did, completely overhauling the boilers, and replacing the turbine reduction gearing with Soviet models. This refit also saw much of the other equipment replaced and the anti-aircraft battery stripped out, with newer Soviet weapons replacing the old Italian ones. There was even some discussion around replacing the secondary battery as well. All in all, it was a massive amount of investment and only really finished in early 1955. It was quite a lot of work, really, for a ship that was only ever used for training. And not even a few months later, all of that work went to waste. On the night of October 29th, 1955, an old German mine detonated beneath the ship. This immediately punched a massive hole in the battleship's bottom, causing her to roll over and capsize. It happened so quickly that 617 men were killed. That brought an end to the story of the largest war prize to enter Soviet service. Outside of various, and frankly silly, conspiracy theories cropping up about vengeful Italian frogmen sinking the ship. That would be a good plot for a James Bond movie, 
but is hardly realistic. So, let's move on. The next largest ships to fall into Soviet service were two light cruisers, one Italian and one German. The Italian ship, Duca de Aosta, followed much the same trajectory as Cesare, minus the massive explosion. Under the temporary name of Z-15, the cruiser was handed over at the same time her battleship consort was. She entered Soviet service under the name of Kerch, joining the Black Sea Fleet in summer 1949. Details of that service are sparse on the ground. Even a recent source, entirely on the fate of war prizes, only notes that the cruiser served with the Black Sea Fleet until February 7th, 1956, at which point she was assigned as a training ship, serving in that role until redesignated OS-32 on May 11th, 1958. Now an experimental ship, the cruiser limped along until being scrapped in 1961. It's highly probable that even her active service was mostly spent on training, just like the ex Cesare. As for the other cruiser, that was the Nuremberg. This German cruiser would be transferred to the Soviets, where she joined the Baltic Fleet. In so doing, the cruiser became the largest and longest surviving German warship in the post-war years. However, the active career of the cruiser, renamed Admiral Makarov, was rather short. It only really lasted from 1946 until the 1950s, either the mid-50s or the late-50s. Initially assigned as flagship of the 8th Fleet, Makarov required a major refit in 1949. This replaced her German anti-aircraft guns with Soviet models, while generally fixing up lingering issues. There would not be any major modifications along the lines of what Cesare received. In fact, with the arrival of the new Chapayev-class cruisers in the 1950s, Makarov was reduced to training duty. This choice was made easier by an issue she had in common with Prince Eugen, finicky and unreliable boilers. Instead of spending the time and money on replacing those, the Soviets simply pulled her from frontline duty. Exactly when this happened is, as common with these ships, a bit foggy. Some sources will say 1954, while others will go with 1957. In the latter case, a boiler fire rendered the ship unfit for further service. Either way, the cruiser would only last in this role until 1959. At this point, the ship was probably scrapped by 1960. But, again, this is something that is difficult to confirm without access to records that may not even exist. At least one online source notes that the ship was actually quite popular and mostly trouble-free. Worth noting, although I haven't seen this opinion anywhere else. Before we move on to destroyers and other light forces, there was one other ship in the roughly cruiser size range. That being an ex-Finnish coast defense ship renamed Vyborg in Russian service. Handed over as a war prize in 1947, the ship remained in Soviet service through to 1958. This largely consisted of training cruises through to 1952. At which point, while under a routine refit, major defects were identified. The ship went through a fairly massive modernization, with the engines and electronic equipment completely torn out and replaced. This lasted from 1953 through 1957, which was quite a lot of effort for a ship that was reduced to a reserve accommodation ship in 1958. The Soviets apparently tried to sell her back to Finland around this time. But that went nowhere, and the old coast defense ship was scrapped in 1966. A shame, as that would have been an interesting potential museum ship. In any event, that covers the larger ships. Let's look at the destroyers now. The Soviets would end up with destroyers from all three major Axis navies. Four German destroyers, plus three modern, and three old torpedo boats followed by two Italian destroyers, and again, three torpedo boats. And finally, a smattering of Japanese ships, ranging from two large destroyers to four escort destroyers. All of these ships had fairly short careers, even compared to their larger counterparts. I'll start with the Germans. The XC-14, renamed Pritki, was out of service and scrapped by 1952. Meanwhile, the XC-15 was renamed Pyelki 
and became an accommodation ship in 1949. She would, admittedly, last in that role until 1958. But an accommodation ship isn't exactly doing much, if any, actual sailing. As for the other two, they didn't see much more excitement. Z-33 became Pearl Vorney, receiving an early refit from 1947 through 1950. Her active duty came to an end soon after, as the ship was reduced to a training ship in 1954, before becoming an accommodation hulk in 1958. A fire in 1960 put an end to that, with the ship scrapped soon after. The final destroyer, Z-20, served as Procne until 1954, before moving to an accommodation role. I'm sure you're seeing a pattern at this point. In any case, this final ship was scrapped in 1958. Probably. As for the torpedo boats, they follow pretty much the same theme. T-17 was only active until 1949, when she was converted to a target control ship. In that role, the ship lasted until the end of 1959, before going for scrapping in 1960. T-33 lasted until 1954, at which point she became, well, if you're guessing accommodation ship, you'd be right. The ship was ultimately scrapped sometime after 1956. The final modern torpedo boat, T-12, had a much more interesting fate. The ship would suffer severe machinery damage in 1949. Instead of fixing her, the Soviets put the ship on Lake Ladoga and subjected her to nuclear weapons testing. Although this was evidently simulated weapons testing. Not that it mattered, because the Hulk still ended up radioactive. The Soviets loaded her up with nuclear waste and sank the ship in shallow water. Because why not at this point? She was salvaged in 1991, and then promptly sunk in deeper water in the Barents Sea. This being 1990s Russia, I doubt they even bothered removing the nuclear waste before scuttling the ship. That aside, the other three torpedo boats, T-107, T-158, and T-196, only briefly saw active service before being pulled to various secondary roles. One of them, T-158, lasted until 1961. Now, let's look at the Italians. Those two ships, Artiglieri, formerly Commissia Nera, and Fuglieri, were not long for the world. They joined the Black Sea Fleet with the other ex-Italian ships in 1949 and 1950, respectively. And by 1954, both ships had been changed to target ships. At which point their career becomes, surprise surprise, a bit murky. Some sources will say they were expended as targets in 1954. A more modern source from 2020 says differently. In this case, both destroyers were converted to training hulks in 1958, ultimately being scrapped in 1960. Your mileage may vary on this, of course, as is often the case with Soviet ships. Meanwhile, the three torpedo boats were turned into target ships in 1954, before being disposed of in 1958 and 1959. That just leaves the Japanese ships. Of these, the most famous is probably Hibiki. This destroyer is fairly well known in the modern day, although her active service with the Soviets was fairly short-lived. First renamed Verni and then Decabrist, she was only kept in active service until 1953. For a certain value of active service, as much of this time was evidently spent as a barrack ship. In 1953, the ship was fully pulled from service. However, ex Hibiki would last all the way through to the 1970s, outliving all her contemporaries, if only barely in the case of Yuki Kaze. Her wreck is, nowadays, something of a popular diving spot, after she was expended as a target ship. The other full destroyer, the Akizuki class Harutsuki, had a shorter career. By 1949, the ship was renamed Oskol and was reduced to a training ship. By 1955, another renaming to TSL-64 came along with a change to the target ship role. And then a final renaming to PKZ-37 saw her last until 1969 as a floating barracks. The four smaller destroyers saw even less use. 
All four of them were converted to target ships in 1949, with three scrapped by 1959. Those were the X Kaya, X Hatsu Sakura, and X Shi. The X Kiri, meanwhile, would manage to cling on until 1969 as a floating workshop. She was converted to that role in 1957. That wraps up the notable surface warships. The Soviets would end up with a smattering of German minesweepers, along with Japanese Kaibokan escorts. There's very little known of their service. The German minesweepers would serve mostly until the late 1950s, with two exceptions. XM204 became a salvage vessel, serving in that role until 1964. And XM155 lasted as a firefighting training ship until 1980. As for the Kaibokan, they were mostly reduced to target ship duties in 1948. Several would last until the late 1950s in various secondary roles, like research, salvage, or dispatch ships. One of them, number 142, was transferred to the People's Republic of China and lasted there until the 1980s. With that out of the way, let's look at the smaller ships. The final active warships transferred to the Soviets consisted of submarines and small coastal forces. All of these were out of service by the mid-1950s. The submarines consisted of four Type 7 Cs, one Type 9 C, four Type 21s, and one Type 23, along with two ex-Italian submarines. To round things off, let's look at a couple auxiliary ships. The Soviets ended up with two sail training ships, the Italian Cristoforo Colombo and the German Gorsch Falk. The Italian ship was wrecked by a fire in 1963 and broken up by 1971. The German one, on the other hand, would be a rare story of survival. The ship would last all the way to the dissolution of the Soviet Union before passing to Ukraine in 1993 and then back to Germany in 2003, where she remains as a museum ship to this day. Another ex-German ship, the fleet tender Hella, lasted right up until 2019, before her stripped hulk was finally scrapped. And with that, we come to the end of the video. The Soviets managed to get their hands on a few other ships, but these were never going to be used for much. The hulks of the Ponser ship Lutso, the carrier Graf Zeppelin, and the pre-dreadnought, and I'm going to apologize for this, Schleswig-Holstein, were all used as targets. The hulk of the cruiser Seidlitz, partially converted to the carrier Vesser, was also scrapped. And the absolutely antique target ship Hessen, with her equally old control ship Blitz, a Great War torpedo boat, also ended up with the Soviets. Hessen continued in her role until 1960. Blitz... Well, that's an open question. Scrapped at some points is the most likely answer, but I haven't found anything firm on that topic. She might be rusting under a factory somewhere in St. Petersburg, for all I know. Wouldn't it be the first time that happened? Joking aside, that wraps things up. As you can see, the Red Navy ended up with quite the mix of Axis ships, even if, ultimately, many of them amounted to very little. I also apologize for butchering foreign languages up and down this video. Thank you for watching, remember to like, comment, and subscribe if you enjoy the content, and I'll see you in the next one.